Leak to Axios. Reported by Reason. Go ahead. You want less violence? Let people talk. Exactly right. Empathy builds a peaceful world. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, uh, Elizabeth Nolan Brown on July 31st, um, so was this before, this was before the Alex Jones stuff came out. Uh, Senate Democrats are circulating plans for government takeover of the internet, Reason Roundup writes. A uh, leaked memo circulating among Sem- Senate Democrats contains a host of bonkers authoritarian proposals for regulating digital platforms, purpur- purportedly as a way to get tough on Russian bots and fake news, to save American trust in our institutions, democracy, free press, and markets. So when Democrat Senator Mark Warner writes, to save trust in our institutions, meaning the government, mm-hmm. our democracy, meaning our politicians, our free press, meaning the New York Times, and our markets, meaning our big banks that pay us a lot of money to protect their ass. That's what he means. He does not mean you and me. Right. He means protect them. And that is what oligarchs do. They build a world that protects them and does not protect you. So if you want to make the property rights argument to protect people like Mark Warner, I, I don't have much to say to you because this is what you end up with. You are not fighting back against a pretext to build a structure that will regulate you. Mm -hmm. And when our page and this podcast says you should speak up and say this isn't right and complain to a private company that you you have an agreement with, Mm -hmm. that isn't a bad thing. That's called using the free market and using your voice to give feedback to a company on what you want, what product, and how it should be shaped you'd Mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. But when you don't, you continue the pretense that will usher in regulation. I'm not advocating for regulation. I'm advocating against regulation because regulation doesn't start in a vacuum. It doesn't just show up. You have to build a crisis Mm -hmm. to get legislation passed. And that is what has been done with the Russia investigation. They have built a crisis to regulate social media. And that is exactly what is outlined in this, they're trying to enact their own GDPR like data protection legislation titled Potentially Potential Policy Proposals for Regulation of Social Media and Technology Firms, the draft paper said. Um, leaked to Axios, which is a very reliable site. The paper starts out by noting that Russians have long spread disinformation, including when the Soviets tend to spread fake news, denigrating Martin Luther King Jr. He fails to mention that uh, the Americans and the FBI did the same thing at this, at that time, mm-hmm. but it's different now because of technology. Today's tools seem almost built for Russian disinformation techniques. Warner opines, and the ones to come, he assures, will be even worse. The next it, it is terrible, it is awful, and I am here to protect you from what is absolutely going to be worse. We have a crisis, and I'm here to fix you with some regulation. <laughs> okay, so here's how we're going to do that, Harry. All right, <clears throat> Mr. Tech Man. All right, you're gonna fix it. All right, you 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 weigh in. You stop me. Wave your hand at me when you're ready, because I'm on a okay. roll tonight. I'm right. I'm fired up. All right, I see that. Mandatory location verification. Whoa, 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 whoa. The paper suggests forcing social media platforms to authenticate and disclose the geographic origin of all user accounts or posts. So you hate whistleblowers. Do you hate having your location services checked on? Right, I hate it. I don't want my location known. No, you cannot own my location. You, you, I spent all this money and do all this for VPN, so you do not know where I am at. Right. Uh, imagine having your having to have forcibly have on your location on every Instagram post. If you're a woman who likes to post bikini photos, you got to make sure that your address is posted to that bikini photo now. Exactly, <laughs> and uh, like, and now you're gonna get ad service to you because of the geolocation that you. That's have exactly had. right. There's the, now, yeah, we service you ads. There are there are apps on your phone right now that track your every. If you have location services on for that for that fun game, that mm-hmm. game where you you know play two dots, or mm-hmm. if you play Kingdom Rush, which is my personal favorite, and you go, why are you asking for location services? Yeah. It's because they take that geolocated data and they sell it to advertisers mm-hmm. and then resell you, reserve you ads. And so yeah. it tracks your behavior. So it knows that when you leave Kroger, they know where you spend the most time in Kroger. And then when you leave Kroger, what store you go to. And then, bef- so while you're in Kroger, mm-hmm. in the deli counter, they start showing you the Speedway gas station ad because they know that you might go there next. And then they get a bucket of money from Speedway. 
So, <clears throat> mandatory identity verification. The paper suggests forcing social media and tech platforms to authenticate user identities and only allow authentic accounts. Oh. Quote, unquote, inauthentic accounts not only pose threats to our democratic process, but undermine the integrity of digital markets. And with the failure to appropriately address inauthentic account activity. Um, and they'll punish them under the FTC and the SEC. Um, so, Once again, the... Whistleblowers? <laughs> I personally had to send Facebook my social security number mm -hmm. and my ID to buy ads for We Are Libertarians Facebook page. <laughs> if that. Every user will have to do that. That is their solution. That's what you will have to do. You will have to send Facebook your social security number. Hope you're, hope you're secure in that because that's what's coming. I've got five. <laughs> I'll give them one. Bot labeling. First off, oh, but the, 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 like, to verify the identification thing. Um, all right, so then you've got one sex workers right name um, people who are hiding from an abusive ex um Ooh, blue light um you are absolutely not allowed to use a fake name in certain countries like cambodia where they have a dictator mm -hmm. the way that they root out the um the dissidents mm -hmm. is they check to see who's using a fake name, and then they go hunt those people down Correct. using the IP address. Correct. Dissidents. It's not, you know, it's not unheard of the United States government to go after dissidents. It's right. not unheard of. Um, the other didn't reality winner get all kinds of prison time for basically doing what Cambridge Analytica did? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> no, so I forget what it was, but there was something that one of these companies just did, and basically, like reality winner did the same thing, but she got prison time. Right, it's other thing, but it's other, but companies are doing this all the time, you know, like, you know, like, all those stupid, t you know, the, anyway, I don't want to get into that, <laughs> but the whole, like, ID blocking thing is like, but anonymity or pseudo anonymity, be able to talk to someone that you don't know just to be text on the screen, is the bill ha probably has has stopped a lot of racist people who are sexist, because you can have these conversation with these people. And understand that you know, and they're just be, they're just text on the screen, right? And then you're like, you know what? You're really awesome. You know, like who are you? That's like, oh my god, I've been talking to a black person this entire time, right? Yeah, yeah, you have. I I thought you only thought wrong. No, we're not all like that. No, right. no, 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 no. We are different. We are individuals. So that stops that. You know, now someone would be like, well, I just you know, I can easily block every black person now. Thank you. Thank you, Facebook. I personally found it hilarious when com Comfortably Smug on Twitter, who loves to make fun of libertarians, mm -hmm. was bitching about the Alex Jones stuff and bitching about Facebook privacy. And I'm just like, bruh, you got a fake name on Twitter. Like, I I'm not a huge fan of, like, talking politics under a fake name on Twitter. I know you, <laughs> you like, our Discord is, is fairly anonymous. Pseudo-anonymous. Um, pseudo I mean, you can choose to be anonymous or not, but... Um, so back to what Senator Warner wants to do, forcing companies to label accounts as bots, which I don't know how they would do that. If they discovered a bot, they'd probably just get rid of it. Define popular tech as essential facilities, basically public utilities. These would subject all sorts of heightened rules and controls, says the paper, offering yeah. Google Maps as an example of the kind of apps or platforms that might count. So if you think they're going to start with and, and end with Facebook and Twitter and Google+, Plus, and YouTube, they're going to go into Google Maps, so your location data. That's what the government wants. The government wants all of the data from your phone stored on their servers where they don't have to have these phony... They already have it with the NSA, but they have phony baloney rules that says they can't access it. They want access to it all the time. I use a um, offline map, OSMMD. OSMND? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's an offline map, open source. You can download it. It's really nice. The law um, would not mandate that a dominant provider offer service for free, writes Warner. Rather, it would be required to offer it on reasonable and non-discriminatory terms provided by the government. Other proposals include more disclosure requirements for online political speech, more spending to counter supposed cybersecurity threats, more funding for the FTC, a requirement that companies' algorithms be audited by the feds, so their code would now belong to government <laughs> regulators, mm -hmm. and a requirement of inoperability between dominant platforms. The paper also suggests making it a rule that tech platforms above a certain size must turn over internal data and processes to independent public interest researchers so they can identify potential public health addiction effects, anti-competitive behavior, radicalization scams 
user-propagated misinformation and harassment, data that could be used to inform actions by regulators or Congress. And of course, these include further revisions to Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, recently amended by Congress to exclude protections for prostitution-related content. Is, is this just PRISM? This sounds like PRISM. <laughs> no, it's not PRISM, because PRISM is at least somewhat protected <laughs> by FISA courts. <laughs> What they want is China's social credit system. Oh, sorry. That's what yeah. this is. That's what they want to. Cr that's mm -hmm. where we're going to end up. Mm -hmm. And so in in China, this was a Black Mirror episode, I guess, but it's been in place in China forever. They have social credit systems. So every time you say something mean to somebody on the internet, you have a bad day. You're having a bad day. You say something cranky to someone on your Facebook page. I've never done that myself, but I heard it happens. Mm -hmm. And so you get a mark on your. And so eventually it gets to the point if you have bad enough social credit that you, you can't rent a car, you can't access certain services, you can't it's, – it's, it's a complete – it's basically Big Brother. It's, it's Fahrenheit 451 all over again uh, in China right now. The proposals in the paper are wide-ranging and in some cases even politically impossible and raise as many questions as you might try to answer. But we've got to pass it to figure out what's in it, Harry. Oh, the words. So you sent in a video that I, I want to play the first uh, couple minutes of. The EU is about to destroy the internet by a uh, channel called Computing Forever. Oh, that one. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Harry, you're supposed to talk, and then people heard me belch. How dare you? Uh, all right, so here's, here's the first couple minutes of this video. Exaggeration, though I wish it was. The EU may very well destroy the internet as we know it, and we've got less than one month to act on this. Over the past few years, independent journalists and alternative media companies have faced the ongoing threats of heavy-handed government regulation of the web. This has included nebulous hate speech laws and clampdowns on what biased social media platforms subjectively determine to be fake news. Well, it's about to get a whole lot more difficult when it comes to the issue of copyright. What I'm about to discuss with you next is the biggest, most disturbing threat to free speech and the free press and indeed creativity the internet has ever faced. It's so bad that if this new legislation is allowed to pass, the video you're watching would be impossible for me to make. From edori.org, EU member states agree on monitoring and filtering of internet uploads. On the 25th of May, the European Council agreed to a negotiating position on the draft copyright directive. This will allow the presidency of the council to start negotiations with the European Parliament on mass monitoring and filtering of internet uploads and a chaotic new ancillary copyright measure that will make it harder to link to and quote news sources. In other words, only large media companies and the mainstream media will be able to report on the news as they will be the only ones capable of paying the insane fees required to simply link to another website or source. This is farcical and unworkable. Despite a large number of demands from a wide range of different stakeholders, including EDRI and Copyright for Creativity, to keep working on the text in order to create some semblance of balance, the Council decided to finalise its position with a flawed text. Now it's the turn of the European Parliament to adopt its negotiating position. The Legal Affairs Committee of the European Parliament is voting on the 20th and 21st of June to agree on their standpoint. There is still time to act to prevent the most dangerous parts of the proposal. From techdirt.com, forget the GDPR, the EU's new copyright proposal will be a complete and utter disaster for the internet. Believe it or not, there's an even larger threat from the EU looming, and it's received precious little attention. The EU's new copyright reform proposal is set to be voted on next month, and it will truly be disastrous to the internet. As it currently stands, it will require widespread censorship in the form of mandatory filtering and also link taxes that have already been shown to be harmful to news. Have you got a license for that link, mate? European Parliament member Julia Rita is sounding the alarm and asking people to speak out. As she notes, many of the folks now freaking out about the GDPR wish they got involved over two years ago when it was being debated. And if you're concerned about how problematic this new copyright reform will be for the internet, now is the time to speak out. Yes, even if you're not in the EU. I love how we only have less than a month to do anything about this. It's almost like that was deliberate. 
Please explain to me why we need the EU again. Oh yeah, because without them we wouldn't have a centralized authoritarian bureaucracy to control our lives. I forgot about that. On the topic of copyright, you now have the chance to have an influence. A chance that will be long lost in two years, when we'll all be suddenly faced with the challenge of having to implement upload filters and the link tax, or running into new limits on what we can do using the web services we rely on. So I think that's an important point, is that the American version of GDPR is starting now. Yep. Okay, yep. This, the discussion is beginning now. And so you cannot wait for a year or two from now when it's 30 days before it's passed in Congress. And all the, it's like the debate takes a couple years. The pretext is starting now. And you have to get in on the discussion. And if you are on the wrong side or if you continue to make bad arguments because you can't hold two arguments in your head at once – then this thing is eventually going to get placed in America. And I can tell you, working in radio, it's an exorbitant amount of money to a company like AP. If I wanted to pull up an AP news story right now, read it to you on the air, it's technically illegal based on copyright law. Uh, I would have to go to them and pay basically what you probably make in a year to read that on my podcast, if they'd let me at all. Because as I saw in podcast movement, the legalities of copyright law. Basically, here's what you can do on a podcast. Nothing except talk into the microphone. It's even in question if you can use pod safe music. Right. <laughs> so the ability to do anything, if you put in, if you put in, it, like, it just, it's, you can't do anything on a podcast. So because of copyright law. And then once you start getting upload filters to see if, if you've played any kind of copyright news articles, you can't, you know, like I love No Agenda, the podcast. Mm -hmm. the, a lot of their podcasts is just playing news clips and talking about the news clips. That's technically illegal. They're not allowed to do it. And so eventually they'd create the mechanism to, ch to cut, to stop those guys from doing that. Mm -hmm. So you get less information. Or they would be paying link taxes for linking to articles on your blog. Mm hmm. I have a ton of links on wearelibertarians.com because I want people to have a lot of resources. I'm not paying taxes on that. I'll just shut the site down. <laughs> like, I'm just not... Or, uh, it, or go dark. It, or go dark. Or just take... You know, so you lose more resources on how to educate yourself about politics. But they don't want you to be educated about politics. They want you to stay ignorant. They want you to stay repeating little bumper sticker lines that they all come up with. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just maddening to me. I mean, it's it, it, you cannot wait. Right. Henry. Yeah, you cannot wait. You have to do something now. If you think something else is going to protect you, it's not. It's what they're doing, and they've been doing and marching towards this for a long time. They're coming. That's why they like the whole like the pushback. But when people did start to go dark and go in on VPNs and start to like to push, and people trying to leave their platforms, that's why we do everything they can to keep you in their little silos. So you're too afraid to leave. Exactly. And so... You can't go anywhere. There's no competition. They snuffed it all out. Why do you think they've been running YouTube at a loss? <laughs> Why? To stop anyone from going anywhere else. Yeah. You know? Okay, you can have your Vimeo. Well, we'll take everything else out. Right. We'll, we'll make sure nothing else, you know, nothing else lives. The, the reality of... So I basically... What I do for the podcast, I do for a radio show. Okay, that's that's what I do for a living. So my hobby is my work. My work is my hobby. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to know why I'm stressed out? Is because I never give myself a break. Uh, I have no <laughs> I have no hobbies. I just do this. And uh, so we've been evaluating all of our vendors. Mm -hmm. the The cost of bandwidth to do video is insane. And so if we wanted to do weird libertarians with a private video solution, or even just host the podcast with the bandwidth that we push. It would be th it would be a couple thousand dollars a month to do it privately easily. easily. I yeah. pay I pay twenty dollars because our host that mm -hmm. we use for the podcast it, he gets a big rate discount mm -hmm. for hosting because he has so much bandwidth across all the podcasts. Yeah. Um. The you know we we go to YouTube for video streaming mm -hmm. or Facebook for video streaming. And so in exchange for using those services, they get our information. That's that's the deal. Mm -hmm. Because the the reality is that if I had to shut down the Facebook groups, the podcast hosting and the video hosting and put it all on wearelibertarians.com, 
it'd be very expensive. It'd crash. Our Patreon would not cover it, and yes, the the server bandwidth it would be very expensive. You know, our hosting bill this month for a year of hosting, it's it's like fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah. And we don't really use our website a lot. We have, you know, I mean, we have. It's just the nature of growing is that you get a lot of costs. Mm -hmm. So as you grow in costs, as you grow in size, you grow in costs, and so. That's why it's really important for you to financially support independent media, independent mm. opinion journalists like We Are Libertarians, like other podcasts that you love. You've got mm. to support them because part of what I am doing, part of my strategy through the next couple of years is to grow ourselves to the point that, like, listen, Alex Jones is going to be fine because Alex Jones has diversified himself in so many ways mm -hmm. that you're going to be able to find him. But we are libertarians at this point. This was a wake up call for me. If we are libertarians got deplatformed like this, and it would be very easy to get on the wrong side of a BuzzFeed writer, we'd be gone. Right. We'd be we'd be limping along. Yeah. And so it is important for me over the next couple of years to build escape routes. So we are continuing to be able to give you this information and give you a different point of view. And to do that, I'm going to have to implement some resources, which are going to take it's going to take money. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's why joining Patreon, buying T-shirts, you guys are awesome. I, I had an extra $300 in my pocket this month, and that and that went immediately towards hosting or camera upgrades mm -hmm. uh, or th th there's several things that, uh, uh, you know, so several projects that I'm funding at any given time to upgrade what we do at We Are Libertarians to give you better quality stuff. And to prepare. And, and to prepare. So please, support us on Patreon. Buy a t-shirt. There's a couple new ways at WeAreLibertarians.com. I took a bunch of time over the weekend to revamp the website. Go check it out. You can now donate via crypto. Uh, I've got four crypto ways to donate. Uh, you can now, if you shop on Amazon, we have an Amazon link. We're mm -hmm. an Amazon refer. So if you, it costs you nothing. Mm -hmm. If you go to WeAreLibertarians.com, Right click, copy address link, update your bookmark, save save the bookmark with that new link. Every time you make a purchase, we get a cut. We get a commission. We've already made fifty cents. Yeah. So. And you've got to keep using that link. Can't just go to Amazon. You've got to go to that bookmark right. link. Yes. And so you can find that on the sidebar on WeAreLibertarians.com. Uh, if you just want to make a donation, PayPal's up there as well. So uh, a few other referral sites that if you want to build a website, we've got my favorite tools that are there as well. Um, so please go check that out. Um, we appreciate all the support that you guys get us, give us. It is so necessary, and uh, especially as we grow this thing. And I'm I, I, basically what I have done over the last month, uh, in and what I will continue to do over the next month or so, is prepare for 2020 because we're only about a year away from that beginning. Mm -hmm. So I want to work out the kinks before we get there and have the show, the platform, and everything in tip-top shape to handle the growth. Because when you grow by an order of magnitude times four or five after a presidential election and you know that your audience gets that much bigger and bigger and bigger, once we get to the presidential election, I need to make sure that uh, when people hear us, they stick with us and that we can handle the load. You know, you got to be able to handle the load, Harry. <laughs> uh, so, to everybody, uh, I, I thank you. Uh, so shout out to Austin Peterson. Uh, I want to just mention before we go, Harry, Austin Peterson, uh, a friend of mine, ran a great race mm -hmm. in Missouri. Uh, this is not a criticism of Austin Peterson whatsoever. Uh, so I don't want anybody to take it that way, especially if Austin hears it. I don't want him to think that I'm criticizing him. Mm -hmm. But libertarians, you got to wake up. Uh, we have we are wrong headed about how we run campaigns. We um, we think that if we just you know buy a thousand dollars in Facebook ads or five thousand dollars in direct mailers, mm -hmm. and you go to get get fifty yard signs, and you go to all the forums, then you're going to win your election. That's just not how it works. Okay, you the reality of how you actually win a Senate race. There are three ways to win a Senate. There not a Senate race, any political office. Here's my advice if you want to win a political office. you got three options. Number one, buy it. Buy yourself a Senate seat. It'll cost you about six, seven million dollars of your own money. That would Braun vote. That's what Braun spent here in Indiana. <laughs> Probably more in California. Uh, number two, mesh into the R's or D's and wait your turn for them to promote you. 
After being a good soldier, you may get your shot. Number three, be so well known and liked in your district that you have a shot of overcoming straight ticket voting. You know, I think of Boss Hogg and, yeah. and Jeremiah Morrill out in Henry County, mm-hmm. so well liked, member yeah. of that community for many years, Rex Bell, same way. Mm-hmm. You know, and they still they won some precincts mm-hmm. <coughs> after uh, after several runs. Uh, it, it is about a large on the ground organization that personally touches voters multiple times and drives them to vote. Even then, it may take multiple si- cycles if you're not part of the major party slate or a member of the non dominant party. So think New York Republicans. Mm-hmm. If you're a New York Republican, you may never win your seat if you're in New York City. <laughs> and if you are going to, you better run multiple times. Right. And you yeah. better be a prominent member of your community. And you better have a lot of money because that's what it's going to take. Yep. Um, so I, I, I just haven't found a lot of libertarians over my decade in the party that are willing to kind of put in that work mm-hmm. to build that kind of grassroots organization. But that's what it takes. Right. Uh, and so if you're a candidate out there and you're listening, like take heart, I'm not telling you it's, it's hopeless. I'm saying you got to work your tail off on building that on the ground Mm -hmm. stuff. Don't waste, don't waste your time and money on things that aren't necessarily going to work. Go out there, knock on some doors, meet your, meet your folks and do it multiple cycles. Commit to actually winning your race. You know, don't just do it once and throw a thousand dollars on Facebook and think that you're going to get elected because that just because your friends and family said they're going to vote for you. That's not how it works. We need people with the kind of commitment that Austin Peterson has where he is willing to go out there and and put (laughs) and put in a ton of work and dedicate himself full time. Now we need to get Austin some ground game. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know what it was like in Missouri, but it seemed to be more effective than the 2012 presidential race. Right. And he's, yeah. And, and, you know, all all, more for him. He needs to, you know, it's like day one, go now. Good. Do it again. 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 Get, you know, and you're right. The ground game, like if you, I don't know if anyone like watches like Evan McMahon, like watching what him and Sawyer are doing down there in Arizona. I have working, They're working their tail off in that freaking heat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then you got Carla Garrica in up in New Hampshire. Right. Well, like in her community, this is not the first time she's ran. She's ran multiple times, you know, so, and she's going to keep going at it. Will she get it this time? I don't know, but. She'll keep building a ground game and keep running. You, she's got, she's building name recognition, but it's going to take time. Right. All right, Harry. Final thoughts for this episode. Oh, you know what we need to do. You know what you need to do. We need to talk about uh, Brian Nichols. Let <laughs> <laughs> me write that down. That's not what I thought. BrianNichols.com. Is it BrianNichols.com? I can't remember his website name. And I was going to bring up the uh, uh, <clears throat> Patreon. Are you going to do that after yeah, that? We'll do that after okay, that. Fine. Sorry, sorry. Right. We get back to the you're script. Good. You're good. You're good. Dear Leader writes my jokes for me now. All right, but we're not done yet because in full candidness, we... <laughs> We recorded about 20 minutes before, but then we forgot We forgot this part. Uh, the professionalism starts next week. Uh, so we, Harry was real late tonight. You yeah. had, you were late. I got, uh, let's see, the owner of my company, the company I started working for, just came into town, and most of them are still on California time. So I'm trying to get out of there at 5 o'clock, and that's like midday to them. They're like rock and roll. Right. I need permissions. I need this opened up. Can you turn this on? Can you turn this on? So I got out of there late, and then... A torrential downpour downtown. Yes, and everyone acted like they didn't know how to drive, and the earth yeah. was falling, and like stayed in one spot. You know, I need to get off Delaware Street to like, you know, five forty-five. Yeah, so we ended up. Uh, I had scheduled Brian Nichols for eight thirty to call in about uh, the death penalty, and we're going to start doing a segment on the show called "The Path to Libertarianism," where every every show or once a week, I'm not sure yet how we're gonna how we're gonna set up the segments going to talk about an essential piece of libertarian philosophy this week. It's the death penalty, uh, and uh, this will kind of grow and evolve over time. So if you have uh, things that you'd like to learn about that you're not sure on on the libertarian philosophy, editor at weirdlibertarians.com, and we'll we'll slate that in for a segment. Um, so, and, and at the same time, Brian's going to call in and, and check in and see what's going on on his show, and we'll, we'll talk about uh, the Brian Nichols Show, which is an excellent show. Mm-hmm. Um, so we recorded this at 8.30, 
when Harry got here, and instead of when I thought Harry we'd we'd be about to this point in the show, we'd talk to Brian. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, <laughs> we're sitting here getting ready to start the show, and I've forgotten about Brian. And I get a note from Brian going, "I'm ready." <laughs> like, oh yeah, uh, us too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, ready. So we recorded it for the show. So I I almost ended the show without this part, but uh, it's very interesting, and a lot of people based on the Pope are are wondering about the death penalty. So here we go. All right, thanks for coming on the show. All right, thanks for coming on the show, Brian Nichols. You are such a mensch. Please go download the Brian Nichols Show at WeAreLibertarians.com or in your favorite podcatcher. Such a good show, and uh, Brian is such a good guy, too, and uh, really a great Twitter follower as well. So please go check it out, follow his show, listen to some of the back episodes. I think you will be pleasantly surprised at how good he's, he's getting at interviews at this point. Um, and check out, while you're there, the other We Are Libertarian shows, Boss Hog of Liberty, The Chris Spangle Show, um, Upward, and Raw Audio Politics, or you can find more podcasts at libertarianpodcast.com. Uh, did did we do your final thing? Have we <laughs> did we uh, wrap up with your uh, final thoughts for the episode? Or no, no, all right, no, no, no. So, all right, Harry, let's uh, let's wrap this puppy up then. <laughs> um, my final thoughts on this whole thing. W- Basically, Alex Jones, if you think Alex Jones was the first one to get hit by this mob or these systems or the, uh, that these companies, you're wrong. You're mistaken. Right. The elders of the Internet are sex workers, hackers, and They already went after hackers. They already went dark. Now they went after sex workers. So the conspiracy theories are next. These are, we are the elders of the internet. We've been here a lot longer than most of you guys have even known about the internet. Yeah, We've grown it. We've watched it. It's fascinating that so many people think the internet is Google, Facebook, Apple, yeah. Twitter. Like mm-hmm. To like Sarah Zhang, that whole thing, Like to her the internet is basically the, the apps that are on her phone where she tweets. Like right. Twitter is the internet to this woman. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people like that. That's why it gets me frustrated. Someone's like, oh, Apple's the best computer system. Like, yeah, but all you do is Facebook. You would have did better with a Chromebox. <laughs> right. You have no idea. You, it's like, what I need is what do you use it for? You know, Unless you actually actively open up Photoshop and do something in it. Well, I need Illustrator. Okay, Chrome does that now because most people only use Illustrator and Photoshop to make maybe a simple meme or clean up red eye, you know, on a right. photo because you used a crappy camera. Right. But or you're a crappy photographer. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> uh, all right. I don't have anything. I've said too much already. I'm just. I've. This feels so cathartic. I just have been sitting on this one. Uh, Harry couldn't do last night either. Uh, you're being a real pain in my ass this week. Sorry, I got sick. I'm just now getting off my <laughs> off my cold, um, and then I got the repair bill to get my house fixed. Even after a year now, uh-huh. every time you're gone, people are like, "Did you fire Harry?" It's like I never did fired you? anyone. Did you? I never fired anyone. Mm-hmm. Harry's mm-hmm. not going anywhere, as far as I know. I do get nervous, but because <laughs> he's he's uh, he's like, "I'm sick." I'm like, "Are you mad at me?" <laughs> you mad at me? You sick of my stuff? <laughs> I know I saw that text. I was like, I was gonna just like, oh no, 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 no! I'm like all drugged up. No. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Thanks to Christy Avery, Craig DeCosta, Jason Doolittle, and Brandon Luke for being our one hundred dollar a month subscribers. You guys are awesome. Thanks to all of our patrons at all the different levels. We are so excited that you are partnering with us to grow this thing. And if you're a patron, then you get to hear our bonus content. Harry and I are going to have a little chat about podcast movement and some of the podcast changes. So if that interests you, head on over to wearelibertarians.com, sign up for the Patreon, and uh, you'll get instant access to the content, even though your card is charged on the first of the month. So you get free stuff before you even have to pay for it. What kind of communist country am I running over here? All right, check it out. We are libertarians.com. Thanks so much for joining us, and we will see you tomorrow. I will have Johnny Rocket from the Johnny Rocket Launch, formerly the Johnny Rocket Launch Pad, now blast off uh, his his co host. I think her name is Ray Lynn. I don't know. And then uh, Chris Galt. And we're going to talk a little more Alex Jones, a little more about uh, building uh, his. He's got a new whole new deal going on. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about Roger Paxton and all the bad things about him. <coughs> so. So, uh, thanks for joining us, and we will see you tomorrow. I'm probably going to call it the Johnny Rocket Launchpad until the other podcast, you know, makes a real name for itself. <laughs>